Hello, Oilers fans. Welcome to the day after discussion after the Oilers 5-4 overtime loss in game two of their first round series against the LA Kings. The series is now tied one apiece in their best of seven. Uh, the LA Kings have managed to rip home ice advantage away from the Empton Oilers. So Empton definitely needs to win at least one on the road um, to get home ice advantage back. And honestly, last night's effort was interesting because there were moments where I thought the Oilers were really good. And then there were moments where I thought they were really bad. There's lots to talk about. But before I get there. If you like these videos and you want to see more, make sure you hit like, make sure you hit subscribe. Uh, tell someone that you love them always. And of course, uh, let's get right into this. So as I mentioned, the Oilers, they lose 5-4 in overtime. They were down 3-1 after the first. They came roaring back in the second period. Dylan Holloway had two goals in the game. That is his first two-goal game in his career, whether regular season or playoffs. Um, but there's a lot to talk about, and there's a lot of different things that I want to you know, discuss today. So our topics are Stuart Skinner, Dylan Holloway, Game 3, you know, what kind of adjustments might be made. Hamilton's five on five play. It's never easy. Nuge Dreisaitl Fogel line and just a thank you uh, as always at the end of these videos. So when we look at kind of the advanced metrics at the bottom of the screen here in kind of that purplish font, uh, the Oilers had a 50.33 expected goals for percentage. Their Corsi for percentage was 48.11%, which means the Kings are generating more shot attempts at five on five. Uh, but the high danger Corsi for percentage was in favor of Edmonton last night, 63.64%. And the scoring chances for were 57.69%. So even though Edmonton, um, even though the Kings are able to generate more shot attempts, the Oilers are getting the more high danger looks. However, that's not quite indicative of the play, and it's also not quite indicative of uh, what I'm seeing with my own eyes. So with the first topic, let's get Stuart Skinner. Let's get this right out of the way. There's going to be a lot of people already talking about Skinner. There's going to be a lot of you know discourse surrounding his game last night. Did he play poorly last night? Yes. Uh, should he have played better? And was he one of the reasons why Edmonton lost? Yes. Was he the only reason Empton lost. No. Should we start Stewart's, uh, not Stuart Skinner, Calvin Pickard in game three? Absolutely not. Stuart Skinner is the guy. He is our number one starting goaltender. He did not have a great game. But when we look at some of these goals against, like the Doughty goal on the breakaway, um, you know, Empton just makes made it 2-1. And then there's a play at the blue line where uh, Kulak pinches. Dayarnay takes the guy on the far, what is it, the far left side of the ice. Nugent Hopkins lost where he was supposed to be on his back coverage, but he was able to get most of the puck away from Doughty. So Doughty couldn't even get a shot on net, and that puck ended up going through Skinner's five hole. But it's a tough one because Doughty was obviously in the middle of making a move. Skinner was reacting to the potential move and shot, and it just it's a bad luck goal. Um, but the goals that I did not like on Stuart Skinner last night uh, was the first goal by Kempe. Uh, Evan Bouchard tried to make a play with the puck off the boards. Warren Fogle completely just turned away from the puck. Uh, and then you had Edmonton's two other forwards flying the zone. You did not have any kind of back coverage at all. And where from where Kempe shot the puck, yes, good shot. It's a snipe. That is a goal scorer's goal. Uh, but I would still like Stuart Skinner to be able to save that. It was from distance. But the one that really, really hurt last night was Kevin Fee Fiala's goal at the start of the third period. It was like a minute and 20 seconds in or something. Uh, the shot along the half wall, he kind of just like turned and fired a random shot. It beat Skinner. It was a terrible angle. Uh, that, I, that's, that's just a puck that should never go in the net. And then in overtime, you had Kopitar. You had that really nice... So initially, I thought the puck took like a bad bounce off the boards that went right to Kopitar. But the play that was made at the Kings bench, I forget who it was on the Kings, where they managed to deflect that puck perfectly to Kopitar. I I don't know where Cody Cece was on the ice because Darnell Nurse was back. He he had the back coverage there, uh, but Nurse kind of misread it because I think just because of how that puck bounced out to Kopitar, um, and then Kopitar obviously it was a snipe. I don't want to blame Skinner on that, but at the same time, you do need a save. I think St I think Skinner he's going to be fine. I think he's going to be okay. Uh, I still have faith in him. For fans who are a little hesitant to say that they have faith in Stuart Skinner right now, I do not blame you at all. I just wanted to mention that, you know, for me, I'm okay with Stuart Skinner, um, but we'll see what happens in game three. But let's kind of move on to a more positive player who had a positive impact on the ice, and that's Dylan Holloway. So Dylan Holloway, as I mentioned in the intro, he had two goals last night, played a really good game. He was noticeable every time he was out there. And the fact that he is still only on the fourth line, he's with Yanmark and Carrick, who I actually thought had good games too. Yanmark had a couple of assists. Uh, Carrick had an assist. 
Now, when you're getting goals from Dylan Holloway, you get two goals from Dylan Holloway, you get a goal from Brett Kulak, three goals from players that you don't expect to score during games, you should probably win those games more often than not. But for Dylan Holloway, he's definitely showing why he deserves to continue to stay in the lineup, why Chris Knobloch made the right decision playing him initially in game one. I saw some fans, um, you know, being like, hey, maybe we should put like Brown in or Gagne instead of Dylan Holloway. Um, no, uh, Dylan Holloway is too good. He's too offensively gifted. He's he's fast. He's a good skater. He gets in on the four check. He will bang bodies along the boards. And for Dylan Holloway, two goals. I would like to see him elevated in the lineup. Um and, and not just line three, I would actually like to see him up with Leon Dreisaitl's line because that line is getting absolutely caved in when they're on the ice, but I will talk about them. That is later in this video, but I just wanted to, you know, give a huge shout out to Dylan Holloway. Great game, two goals. I thought he played phenomenal hockey last night and it would have been really nice. Would have been really nice if Empton could have got the win because if Dylan Holloway is giving you two goals in a game, you should be winning these games. Uh, but it's nice to see the depth scoring showing up. Um, but, you know, when we talk about game three, this is kind of what we lead into the adjustments for game three. Will Chris Knobloch make adjustments, whether on D or with the forward group? It's tough to argue taking anyone out of the bottom six because they are producing except for Kane, McLeod and Corey Perry. Now, Kane, McLeod and Perry, they've had their looks, right? They've had some good looks. Corey Perry's been great on the four check. Uh, Ryan McLeod has been really good at supporting down low. Evander Kane has been good. Uh, th this line has been good, but they're not generating any offense right now in terms of goal scoring. Obviously, the goals are going to come. Uh, I would like to see just a little bit more from that third line um, because, you know, when, when we talk about the fourth line, so heading into the series, I was like, okay, well, Yanmark, Carrick, and Holloway, I don't know how I feel about that. And I've... Not I've never been a huge fan of 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 Yanmark, and I have my own reasons for that. Usually, mostly analytically driven. Uh, but Yanmark, he's played good in games one and two. Carrick has played good in games one and two. I have no issues with these guys, and Dylan Holloway's obviously been, played very well. So it's hard to argue to take anyone out of the lineup to put like a Connor Brown in or Sam Gagne or Derek Ryan. Um, but because the Oilers have lost, uh, Chris Knobloch is known to make an adjustment, whether it's one player here and there. I am curious to see if anyone does come out of the lineup for game three. I don't know if anyone will. I feel like Chris Knobloch is like pretty set on this lineup specifically, but I would like him to make adjustments to the second line. Nugent Hopkins, Leon Dreisaitl, and Warren Fogel, they are getting absolutely caved when they're on the ice. They, they're shot at, I mean, they had like a 30-some Corsi 4 percentage in game one, same thing in game two. They are not moving the needle on offense. Obviously, Dry Subtle's been good on the power play at dishing the puck. He has a goal. Like, I get that. That's all positive. But for game three adjustments, line two needs to be adjusted and line three needs to be adjusted accordingly. And that whether you're moving Holloway up, whether you're moving someone down, uh, you've got to make an adjustment here. I thought the McDavid line looked good, not great last night. Um, so I don't know if you move Henrik off that top line. I probably wouldn't. I would say that, you know, um, the Kings made an adjustment, and I will give credit to the LA Kings. After game one, McDavid had five assists. They prevented McDavid from being a huge impact on the ice last night. Now we can argue the clutch and grabbing that the Kings were doing, but the Oilers got away with a lot too, so I'm not even going to go there. Uh, but I did want to talk about the five-on-five -five play. So I mentioned that uh, second line has been getting caved in five-on-five, -five, but the Oilers in general at five-on-five, -five, they're being outplayed and they're being outscored at five-on-five, -five, in my personal opinion. Um, the Oilers are doing their damage on the power play, which is great because the power play is part of the game. However, most of the games are played at even strength or five on five, and the LA Kings have outscored the Oilers nine to six at five on five in two games. The LA Kings have nine goals at five on five. Like, you can't be giving up that many goals, and for the Oilers, you're you're already a negative three goal differential at five on five right now, and um, you know, it. This was a problem. Last year in the playoffs, the Oilers just could not generate enough offense five on five to make up for the mistakes that they're giving up and the puck that's going in the net. Um, Nurse CC was a huge talking point at the trade deadline, that defensive pair specifically. Um, they are one goal for three goals against at five on five. I know Nurse has been on the ice for four five on five goals against so far. Uh, Cody CC's only been on the ice for one goal four at five on five, and you do need more from that pair, but they're also not the biggest issues either. Uh, I actually think Kulak and DeHarnay have not looked great at five on five. They're not really moving the needle. And Ekholm Bouchard, they're also not 
uh, moving the needle in a way that I thought that they would in this series. Um, now, as a pair, their expected goals for percentage last night was like in the 60% range from natural stat trick uh, at Combe Bouchard, that is, uh, which is good. That means when they're on the ice, the Oilers are, you know, they're getting the better chances. However, it feels like when they're on the ice, there's been a few really good looks for the Kings as well. And I, the whole team at five on five, and this isn't just against Ekholm or Bouchard, Nurse, CC, Kulak, or Deharnay, the whole team at five on five needs to get better. This is... Um, you know, you can't get into this type of game with the LA Kings. Now the Kings there, they haven't really even been able to establish that one, three, one because Empton has been good at, you know, speed through the neutral zone. Um, it, it hasn't been nearly as low scoring as I think a lot of people thought this series would be, but for the Oilers five on five play needs to improve. Goaltending needs to improve. And for Chris Knobloch, I'm wondering if he does, you know, throw a Connor Brown in, in the next game, we will see, but yeah, um, I would like to see a little bit more from everybody at five on five, especially that second line. Uh, in saying that, it's never easy. That is the next topic. These series. So I did a live stream last night, which was amazing. Like, I, you know, there was 23, 2400 people at some point tuned into the live stream last night, the live stream watch party. Uh, if you have not been part of that, I will be live streaming the next two games for sure. And then I don't know about game five yet. And if the series goes even longer, I will make an announcement either on Twitter or on here at some point when I know it depends on my work schedule too. But you know, there was a lot of fans and there's, I see a lot of fans on Twitter right now and you know, Instagram read it and listen nobody expects the oilers to sweep anyone um as a fan would you like it absolutely uh it's the playoffs it's never easy after the overtime winner last night during the live reaction the chat there, there's a lot of people in the chat um you know very frustrated and i totally get it at the same time though this is what it's all about right we want to embrace like the fact that we're feeling the way that we do this morning after the game, the fact that, you know, the way you felt during overtime last night when Kopitar scored, um, that means that the pressure is very high and you are in a position where these games matter. And I said last night on the stream for so long as an Oilers fan, we never got the, we never got to experience this. I I've barely been able to experience playoff hockey in my lifetime as an Oilers fan. And I'm, you know, let's just embrace these emotions and then get ready for game three. Uh, it's not going to be easy. The series was never going to be easy. Uh, I predicted the Oilers in six, but I also said I wouldn't be surprised if the series goes seven because that's that's how these two teams are. And, you know, the Oilers, they tend to beat themselves a lot of the time, but the LA Kings are a good team. And we should remember that they are a good team. They, in my series preview, they had terrific metrics, their five on five metrics, their special teams, all that jazz. Um, so when we look ahead here, let's just uh, hope the Oilers make the right adjustments. The team is able to kind of rebound after the loss last night. Did they play good enough to win? Yes. Um, can they be better? Absolutely. They can be much, much better. Uh, and I already touched on Nugent Hopkins, Dreisaitl and Fogel a little bit, but I did want to touch on them just a little bit more. Uh, because now I don't know who you move off that line, honestly. Like, do you move Henry down? Do you move Nuge down to the third line? Do you move Holloway up to the second line? Do you move Fogel? Like, I don't know what you do with that second line. Nuge and Hopkins, Leon Dry, Subtle, and Warren Fogel on paper are a great line. That trio should work. You have a mix of speed, skill, tenacity, grit, um, but they're not. A, like they're not able to establish a four check right now and defensively they've been caught out there on some pretty questionable goals in terms of where the players are uh that line all three of these forwards have been caught flying the zone before the puck is out of the the you know the, the oilers defensive zone and you just need you need more from these guys for especially from nugent hopkins and leon dry these are your two leaders they wear an a on their sweaters like you need more um not to harp on them, and I'm not trying to just pick on them specifically, but that trio does need to be split up. Whether you move one or two players around, that specific trio needs to be moved, in my personal opinion. But that's pretty much it for me today. Um, you know, these videos, they're a good talking point. I try and bring topics up to uh, start a conversation. So if there's anything that you want to talk about, if there's anything that you want to add, if there's anything that you think I missed, please let me know in the comments section below. I love hearing from all of you. I love reading your comments. The support has been incredible on this channel lately, by the way. Uh, we passed 1,900 subscribers yesterday, which is just mind-blowing. Uh, we are on the path to 2,000 subscribers. 
uh, from someone that started their channel six months ago when Edmonton was dead last in the NHL. And, you know, I started making videos because I was frustrated at the team and I was trying to connect with fans uh, just to, you know, feel like, you know, my thoughts mattered. Uh, you have all made me feel incredibly amazing and special. And I'm so happy to continue to make content and hopefully the playoffs continue to go for a long time for the Oilers here this spring because there's so much content and there's so much I want to do. There's so much I want to talk about. So again, I cannot thank all of you enough. You are all truly amazing and um, yeah, really appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching. As I mentioned earlier, make sure you hit like, make sure you hit subscribe if you haven't already. And of course, tell someone that you love them today. All right. I will see you tomorrow morning for the pregame report before game three starts. And I will see you tomorrow night at 8.30 p.m. with the uh, live stream reaction. I will have a link to that once it's ready to go. I might not post it until the pregame report, but do keep an eye out for the next live stream notification. It will be uh, sometime tomorrow. So take care, oil country. Enjoy your... Uh, uh, what day is it today? I don't even know what day it is today. Thursday. Enjoy your Thursday. Enjoy the weather if it's nice where you live, and uh, we'll see you soon. All right? Take care.